I'm Zach. And I'm Jesse. And you're watching Tesla Time News. Episode 35. On Now You Know. All right, so Tesla just uh, released their quarter one 2017 results the other day. Awesome. And uh, lots of numbers, right? Everyone loves quarterly numbers. Love quarterly numbers. Uh, we try and distill it a little bit for you. I'm really not into giving quarterly numbers because, as we know, Elon doesn't like to think in quarters. Quarters are just these arbitrary things that analysts love because then they can keep their jobs and talk about numbers. <laughs> Let's talk about com you know some of the kind of cool numbers here. Absolutely. Uh, there was record vehicle production from Tesla. They delivered... Uh, revenue that was beyond what the estimates were going to be so that's let's, great let's, um some of their key points here is that the model 3 is on track for the production in july wow and let me just tell you if there was going to be a problem this is about the time we'd be hearing about it that's true if they were going to backtrack now you'd be hearing oh we're going to push this off there's no talk of that so everything is looking good that's amazing i mean they've never released a car on time <laughs> so this is it's They've fantastic learned. news yeah let's talk about their gross margin okay and, and what is gross margin i don't know what is gross margin so gross margin is the amount of basically profit that you're making on an item so you take out all the costs that it takes to make that item mm -hmm. and then selling that item whatever you got left is your profit so if you made a widget for a buck um, and you sold it for a buck twenty. You're making twenty cents a profit. That's your margin. That's your margin. Okay. So when you're selling a car, obviously your margins are important because you need to be making money. Uh, Tesla is now making. They announced twenty seven point four percent gap and twenty seven point eight percent non gap margin. That means that on every car they're selling, they're making about twenty seven percent. What's gap margin? Uh, ga these are accounting principles. How you you do gap, which is. Uh, is it generally gap, accepted G A A P, not not gap like the store. Oh right, sorry. Yes, G A A P is generally accepted accounting principles. Non gap is non generally accepted accounting principles. I am not a um, accountant, accountant, and I don't claim to understand why they do it in such a way. But basically, I, I like to look at the bottom line, which is that about twenty seven point four percent is their gross margin. That's, that's a pretty cool. decent gross margin on a product. Absolutely. Yeah, that's um, a, that's great. Yeah. So. They're, and the good news is that that number's staying pretty steady. So they're, so they're they're making money on on each sale. Exactly. They're not unlike, losing money. Unlike many car manufacturers we know, like GM, that might introduce a model where they don't make money on the model just so that they can meet the fleet requirements. Good, good point. It's a good point. Uh, Tesla has four billion dollars of cash on hand going into quarter two, and that's, that's important because this is the quarter where they're going to be spending. They expect about two billion dollars this year on the production of Model Three. So okay. if you've got four billion on hand and you're going to spend two billion, that's good news. It means you're not going to probably need to do another capitalization round. That's great. Vehicle production in quarter one increased by sixty-four percent compared to a year ago. Um, it actually set a new record of twenty-five thousand fifty-one deliveries and wow. two point seven billion dollars in revenue. That's actually a little higher than a lot of analysts had expected. So things are looking pretty good. That's great. Another little thing uh, that was in their quarterly announcement is about their solar energy generation deployment. They have 150 megawatts of solar energy that was deployed in quarter one mm -hmm. and 60 megawatt hours of energy storage. That's the batteries. That's great. Yeah, that's a lot of batteries. So this next story is about anti-selling the Model 3. Can you tell me a little bit about Yeah, so basically it sounds like uh, Elon just does... He doesn't want to sell any Model 3s. He's, oh, he just doesn't, mm. he just, he doesn't want to sell any. So what, what do you mean? So basically I think he's, uh, he's a little worried that he oversold the Model 3 okay. to begin with. Um, I think that either, I think that no one knew what a demand there would be for, for such a product, mm -hmm. um, from Tesla. And so I think they're just the number of people who reserved I think it was higher than his expectation. Mm. So he's trying, what he's trying to do now is to sort of downsell the Model 3. I think because he wants to make sure that everyone can get um, the, their tax benefit. Oh, that's a good point. Yeah, and so because he did point out on the conference call that he thinks that basically every U.S. reservation holder for the Model 3 should get the tax credit, the $7,500 federal tax credit. And that's good news if he thinks that. I think the point to keep in mind is that even though he has been anti-selling it, I mean, mm -hmm. the, basically on the Tesla website, they've been coming out with articles and blog posts that are saying, like, this isn't the best car in the world. Right, it's if not going to be a Model S. Car, right, if you want the best car, we've already made that car. Right, we've made two S of them. X, right? There's the Model S and the Model X. Right. I think the problem is when I was thinking originally about the Model 3, I was thinking it's going to be just like a Model S. It's going to have the same acceleration, it's gonna have 
all the same tech, all the same, I mean, and for the most part it is. It's gonna, the acceleration is gonna be awesome, the range is gonna be awesome, the self-driving is gonna be awesome, it's all gonna be really awesome. Um, but if I want the top of the line thing, they're gonna keep all that for the Model S. Right. And so what Elon is just trying to do is is to, to anti-sell it, um, and he's not doing a very good job. <laughs> right. I mean, <laughs> At anti-selling it. During the conference call, Elon explained that despite the anti-sell of Model 3, reservations for the Model 3 and the deposits for them continue to rise. Um, so what do we mean by anti-sell? Well, he says, if you come into our stores and you want to buy a Model 3, we try to get you to buy a Model S or X instead. We anti-sell the Model 3. I mean, that's reservations continue to climb week after week. No advertising, mm -hmm. anti-selling, nothing to test drive, still grows every week. Okay, but wait, I, I heard my friend talking about this. He says that all the deposits are down. Yeah, so that's very misleading. An analyst asked about this. Well, your deposits seem to be down. Their deposits had been as high as about $700 million. Okay. And that means deposits for the Model S, X, and 3. So those are deposits like in an account? In an account. Okay. That account has now gone down to $613 million. So how can reservations be going up if, if that's if the deposit number is going down. So when you put a res reservation down for Model S or X, that's a $5,000 deposit Okay. to start building the car. Yeah. Um, the reason that money has dropped in the account largely is because they've been delivering Model S's and X's. And so those once those go out the door, that leaves that account. Oh, because they've been sold. Because they've been sold. So okay. it's actually good news. It means that those people are getting their cars and they're off that reservation so list. So the cash flow is to Tesla. It's not, no one's reneging right. their... No, and so, I mean, basically, we're up to almost 500,000 reservations for the Model 3. Wow. That's that's over 500, almost $500 million of reservations for the Model 3. Wow. So these analysts are looking at that one account, but they're not looking at the fact that reservations are actually going up. And reservations have to have the deposit. Right, so yeah. I have to have the $1,000 down. Okay, well, all right, good. That makes me feel a lot better. <laughs> this next story is a little Model, model Y tidbit. Um, no, wait a minute, okay. What's the Model Y? We were just talking about the Model 3. Right. Um, so basically, uh, Elon kind of leaked it that he's planning on having the Model Y come out in 2020 or maybe late 2019. And the Model Y will be a smaller SUV, a crossover, basically. Um, it was originally going to be built on the Model 3 platform. He's now saying that it probably won't be built on the Model 3 architecture. It'll probably be built maybe from the ground up. Um, he doesn't like the 12 volt wiring that goes into cars. He thinks 12 volt is antiquated and unnecessary. And that he said it was the worst voltage <laughs> yeah, to did. use. And that comes from most cars. Uh, the internal combustion engine cars have the 12 volt battery in the front. Right. That's what you know does the spark plug and your AC and, and everything. And we still have a 12 volt lead acid battery in a Model S and X. And right. you're probably going to have one in a Model 3. Um, I think that means that the Model Y might be the first one to not have a 12 volt lead acid battery. Right. Because he hates 12 volts. Yeah. And I mean, so he has mentioned before that the Model Y will have Falcon Wing doors. Um, a lot of people like that idea. A lot of people don't like that idea. I personally think it's an awesome idea because I think that a $35,000 car that has falcon wing doors is going to be a huge success because i love my falcon wing doors they they stand out they're technologically awesome right um and if you can do it do it um absolutely so i, mean, I think it's great but i'd love to hear from you guys below like if model y comes out would you be interested in falcon wing doors and have you tried falcon wing doors yeah. <laughs> don't knock them till if, you try yeah them. don't <laughs> knock them till you try them trust us <laughs> um so we've been talking a lot about the chevy bolt in america it's come out and people are um you know, buying them, they're excited to buy them, uh, and you know, it just doesn't seem like they want to sell them very much. GM, yeah, yeah. When when you walk into a GM dealership and you're like, "Hey, I want to buy, I want to buy a Chevy Bolt," they're like, "Have you checked out the Malibu?" <laughs> and you're like, "No, no, 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 I want, I want the Bolt." They're like, "Oh, okay, you want to like, we have volts? You, yeah, we've got some volts for you." And they're like, "No, I want a Bolt." And they're like, "Okay, well, we'll put you on a list or something." Most like that. Chevy dealers can't even get their hands on a Bolt, right? That's, so, so it's it's tough going right um but that's just america looks like they're gonna be selling bolts in europe calling them the ampera e i i like the name um and it's basically going to be the same car just with a, a different logo on the front um and so they're going to start selling them uh i'm excited 
I'm glad you're excited, but um, for those of our European fans out there that want to get a, a Chevy Bolt or an Ampera E in, in Europe, it doesn't look like you're going to be able to get them very easily, or very many of them. So you think it's going to be the same story? I don't. It's not just me. Uh, Elon mentioned on, on the Quarter 1 conference call, he said, Mark my words, GM will only sell the minimum number of cars to get the ZEV credits, 20, 25,000 cars. Wow. He said, as soon as they hit that limit, they're going to stop. It just really, it puts a bad taste in my mouth. Because, I mean, the Bolt is an exciting car. It's a hatchback. Yeah. It's uh, got pretty great range. Yeah. Um, you know, it can do some DC fast charging if you get uh, the more premium options. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a great car. Great car. But I just, I don't want to, I mean, it costs about the same as the Model 3. Mm -hmm. I just don't want to invest my money in a company that, in doesn't... A company that doesn't believe yeah. it. If they're only doing it because you have to do something. Right. You know, it's like on Mother's Day, you know, like you, have, you wake the kids up really early. We're going to make breakfast for mom, you know, and they're like, I don't want to do it. And it just loses the whole effect. It would be one thing if the kids were excited to wake up and, oh, mother, look here, we made some things for right. you for Mother's Day. Um, but they, you know, if, if they're just dragging their feet, it's just like, I don't want to support that. Are you going to be up early on Mother's Day? I Yeah, absolutely, of course, every You're year. You're not going to be the GM of the kids. I won't be the GM of the kids. I want to be the Tesla. I want to be the, here, mom, made you a solar panel. Check it out. It, I hear you. People want these cars. Sell these cars. Gotcha. What are you thinking? Like, what are you, come on. Yeah, I don't think we can get into the mind of GM. So Elon's letter to Groman employees. Now, so this is kind of an ongoing story. Tesla Groman, which is uh, an engineering company in Germany that Tesla bought. Mm -hmm. This is the company that's going to make the machines that make the machines. Um, it's about a 700, 800 employee company. And when Tesla bought the company, they were working for a lot of other car manufacturers, BMW, Daimler, Bosch. Um, and then Tesla basically decided a month or two ago, hey, we got to stop those contracts. Just work solely on Tesla. That worried a lot of employees. I think it even worried their founder, Mr. Mm -hmm. Groman, who has now left the company. And we think it's probably because Tesla ousted him. Yeah. Um, and so that worried a lot of employees who wanted to then unionize. Um, and so Elon got directly involved and he wrote a letter. And he visited them and then, yeah. and then he wrote a letter. Um, and just we're going to pull out some quotes here. If you have time, you should read this letter. Read it's the very whole thing. inspiring. It's I, very inspiring. I love basically every part of this letter and usually i mean it's just like business things they're just you know a whole bunch of malarkey usually but why just... is this important this is super important for the model 3 because these inverter lines that they are in uh, inventing and making mm -hmm. are going to be shipped later in may to fremont and they are going to be making the model 3 cars so this has to work right um, we need this company to work um so here's some quotes from this letter that elon wrote to the employees Tesla is unlike most other companies. Unlike other companies, the existence of Tesla is not only to make money. If it were only about this one goal, then I can tell you that the founding of a completely new car manufacturer would definitely not have been the smartest way. Wow. I mean, that's it's so true. And he, he goes on to talk about how it's to change the energy uh, system. It's to promote solar energy and to, and to start, um, you know, working on renewable sources of energy and, and to combat climate change and everything like that. It's, right. it's very inspiring. Um, he goes on to say, first, the question of trust and the longing of every employee for job security, I would like to assure everyone at Tesla Groman that we will not be able to reduce our workforce in the foreseeable future. We want to create a system of equality without artificial barriers so that someone can start as a trainee and one day lead the entire company. This is why we eliminate all the special privileges of the executives. For example, everyone will have equal access to parking, eating at the same tables, and there will be no management offices. I am convinced that managers should work at the forefront in the same work environment as the entire team. Even though I run the company myself, I still do not have my own office and often moved my workplace to the most challenging area in the factory and slept on the factory floor when there was a real crisis. Managers should always take care of their team before they take care of themselves. The supervisor is there to serve his team, not the other way around. That's so true. I mean, I, I've worked on a manufacturing floor before and having, you know, your engineers and your your project, your leaders, you know, have their own offices that are just, you know, off the line, like air conditioned. Yeah, completely air conditioned. They're totally, you know, you have to go through, you know, two sets of doors to get to, you know, where everyone else is. It just makes this completely weird working environment. And it's just like, Wow, what a difference to to just be like, you know, you're the supervisor, get, you know, get to work, get 
you know, be helpful. Mm -hmm. You know, you're not just there to just sort of sit around and, and, you know, boss people around. You're, you're there to help out and solve right. problems. See how things work on a day-to-day -day basis. Right. It's, it's so great to hear a company just talking about that and to sort of eliminate this, like, this hierarchical structure of like, I'm better than you. <laughs> you will never be as great as me because you will always be on the factory floor. Like, it's just like, mm -hmm. I'm just so glad that it's, it's this whole structure of just equality and respect for everyone. It's really great. And it appears to have worked because I mean, um, employees are now moving away from a unionized action at the firm. And it looks like probably the, it looks like the problem has been resolved. Wow. That's amazing. Well, I mean, we'll see in the next few months. Absolutely. But, but that's great. So, uh, so what is this? Bring your own diesel? Uh, I, no, no, no. This is this is a, this is the name of a company. Oh, uh, BYD is uh, a Chinese company. Um, they are manufacturing uh, buses in the United States. They've uh, made a couple of electric um, stuff before. Some electric buses. Oh yeah, a and, class eight truck. Yep. Yeah, and and uh, now they're making a sixty foot all electric bus in the United States. And it's going to have a 270 mile range. Nice. So, I mean, this. Is that a big that's battery? Like it, yeah, it's a 547 kilowatt hour battery. That's five and a half P100 cars. P100s, yeah. <laughs> wow. Or 100s, yeah. Wow. I mean, it's. It's huge battery. So they just made one of them so far. Mm -hmm. It's going to be the first of 13 that uh, BYD will deliver to Antelope Valley Transit Authority in Los Angeles. And I mean, Wait, so people are actually going to get on this bus and go to work? People are going to get on this bus and go to work. That's exciting. Battery electric. I'm super exciting. Wow. This is part of um, AVTA's award-winning campaign to fully electrify its fleet by 2018. Wow. So Antelope Valley is hoping to have a fully electric fleet by 2018? Yeah, that's next year. Wow. Now, how many people can sit on these buses? So uh, each bus can sit up to 60 people. Wow. So, I mean, it's a, that's a big it's bus. A, it's a big bus. Um, and it can fully charge in about two to three hours. Wow. I mean, I'm super excited. This sounds great. It really does. Yeah. So Model 3 sightings are always exciting. Yeah. I mean, we're getting closer and closer. So this one is a white Model 3, and it's a, uh, some high-definition pictures. And it looks a lot different than the other models we've been seeing. Is it just because it's in white? I think that um, the white can sort of highlight some of the design lines that are, that are harder to see on some of the darker cars. Um, and also, this was sort of in direct sunlight, so we got to see some shadows and stuff. Yeah, that, that shadow that line along the, the door. I don't know what you call that. That, that line along the, the side of the car. So the bottom of the door. It looks pretty cool. Yeah, it does. It's nice and sharp. Um, you know, a lot of people have strong feelings about the, the look of the car. I mean, I I don't really care what it looks like. It looks amazing. <laughs> so, I mean, I don't, I, I'm not going to be worried whether that's there or if there's something else there. Right. I mean, and then there's another picture here of a Model 3 that was supercharging. They quickly covered it, I guess, because they don't want people to look inside. Uh, maybe because if you can stand close to it, you'd be able to see some cool features that they don't want to reveal yet. Probably. That's I mean, kind of interesting. Yeah. Um, I don't know what, what they're hiding. I know. It's it's pretty exciting. Some interesting news this week about the Nissan Leaf. Uh, we've all been kind of anticipating the September release of the new Leaf. Yeah. And uh, there's been talk about the range, what it's going to have. It looks like, according to Kazu Yajima, the head of electric vehicles for Nissan and Renault, um, they're now saying to expect between 350 and 400 kilometers, or 215 to 250 miles um, of range, uh, the, the new Nissan Leaf. This is great. I'm, I'm pretty excited about this. That would make it in the Bolt Model 3 range. Right. I mean, I would consider it to be more of a Bolt because it's not going to have the same supercharging network as the Model 3. Obviously, there's, okay. there's a discrepancy, I think, between a, a Bolt type car mm -hmm. and a Model 3 type car. True. But I mean, but a huge leap. A huge leap forward. Uh, you know, I have a 2013 Leaf. It has like a 100 mile range, which is fine, um, but it's not amazing. Right. I mean, range anxiety seems to go away when you hit around 200 miles. Right. I still get range anxiety just on, on a regular basis. Mm -hmm. If I'm doing anything out of the ordinary that I haven't done at least 5, 10, 15 times, mm -hmm. you know, it's just like, so I'm really glad. And they were also saying that in the future by 2020 that they're expecting the range to be even better something yeah. like a 340 mile range right and i mean that sounds great too i'm glad that they're going to be i mean because that's i think that's going to be maybe respectable in 2020 depending on the battery technology i'm just so glad that the model 3 has set the bar i mean elon came out and said 215 miles then gm came out and said oh 238 and now nissan's saying oh, okay we'll match that if 
Elon hadn't come out and said 215. If he had said 100 miles, <laughs> they'd be selling the same lead. Exactly. Because He's pushed the, the market. Right. I mean, we've heard from, I think one of our commenters said that he knew someone who worked for Nissan, um, and they said that basically when they heard what the Bolt was coming out with in terms of range, they went back to redesign because they were only at like 160, 180 miles wow. of range. Um, and that really just goes to show that they, they do want to compete with each other, and mm -hmm. that Tesla pushing the bar is pushing everyone up. Yes. So I'm very excited about that. I hope though that, that Nissan isn't going to do what GM is doing with the Bolt and, and that is just oh, filling their, their ZEV credit because I mean, it's just, it's just so scummy. I think that they could really do a good job and really sell a real electric car and, and push it to people and people, you could change their their whole mindset. Right. So we've been looking online um, at a lot of the uh, Project Love Day um, submissions. So for Project those of you- Project Love Day? Yeah, so for those of you who don't know, this is, uh, uh, Elon got a letter from uh, a fifth grader um, and her last name was Love Day. Oh, okay. And uh, she suggested that they do a Tesla commercial contest from Tesla fans. Mm -hmm. um, so we have submitted one, you can check it out right here, but there are tons more there's uh, yeah over 40 yeah i mean there's a there's a playlist there's uh a ton of great commercials awesome so you should ones. definitely just go check them all out i love ben sullen's I, I love the one with the dog i love the one with the dog too i love that he sends the dog to the vet um in <laughs> his autonomous sleep. car i mean obviously the cars can't do that yet but they will right so i mean sending your dog to the vet so you it's can so spend cool. time with your child you can definitely great. waste a lot of time watching these commercials yeah um so yeah go check these out um Oh, yeah. so yeah, so they've extended the deadline to June 5th. Yes. So you have another month to get your commercial. So I mean, there. if the weather has been crappy, like it was for our commercial, <laughs> um, you can finally use some of those spring days to to get some excellent, uh, some excellent outdoor footage. Yeah. So we get comments every week from our awesome viewers, and this week is no different. We got a comment from Andy Sowanek, who said, I love you two, and congrats on the tour. And as always, thanks for the news. You guys rock. And I know that we're being a little self-congratulatory picking his comment, but first of all, I really love it that you guys are so happy right. for Right, I mean, this, is, this was not the only right. one comment. Um, um, all sorts of people were really positive and just... Thank you so much. Right, because um, you guys made it happen to begin with. I mean, we couldn't have gone on the tour without you guys using our referral code, first of all. So thank you so much for that. Right. Secondly, big shout out to all the people who reached out to us on our Facebook account to tell us that they'd be willing to meet up with us in San Francisco. We've got employees from, from Tesla. We've got fans of Tesla um, telling us all about different things we should do in the city. So we're going to meet a lot of you there. If, you, if you're just watching this now and you just heard this, like, yes, we're going there um, May 31st through June 3rd. So if you're going to be around message us on facebook we'd love to try and meet up with you if we can um because we love talking about tesla like yeah. all the time that's what we love talking about we love so. talking about it so um definitely connect with us on facebook if you haven't already and you're going to be in the area and also just thank you so much for for being such positive and awesome fans it really is so awesome also i just want to point out um our referral code is still good you could still get a thousand dollars off yeah. your tesla model s or model x if you're getting one mm -hmm. um and that that referral will go a long way to getting us to go to, you know, different events and, and stuff like that and bringing you some really like top of the line news. We're going to meet Franz von Holzhausen. We're going to get a personalized tour of the factory yeah. and we're going to be able to tell you all about it. Well, I don't know what we'll be allowed to tell you, <laughs> but we'll try to tell you as much as we possibly can. Right. Um, so thank you so much to everyone. It's yeah, and we're, we're going to be shooting so much in the city, too, just of our trip and stuff. And yeah. I mean, for Bobby, this will be his first time going to California. We're so excited to bring him on the tour. And, I mean, I, maybe his mind will just get blown off yeah, his head. Yeah, I can't so. wait. It's going to be so exciting. <laughs> superchargers! There are some new superchargers that are coming online. They're getting built. They're getting permitted. They're going up all over the place. I know. It's just amazing. All right, so this week, permitted are in Valladolid, Spain. In Skibolten, Norway. I love that name. Uh, construction's going on in Bratislava, Slovakia. And Barcelona, Spain. And in Sydney, Nebraska. And Fleet, UK. Wow, a lot of construction. A lot and of construction. And there is one being open this week in... saint Brique, France. Nice. Um, just so you know, we're not good at pronouncing things. So, <laughs> so please don't blame us. Don't worry about it. Just I we, haven't taken French since the fourth grade. So. I haven't taken it since sixth. <laughs> And um, we have awesome footage that we get every week from our amazing fans who go to these superchargers all over the place. And here is some footage now. We are in Merritt, British Columbia, Canada, and this is a brand new Tesla charging station. Close to us is a Walmart, a Boston Pizza, and a Best Western Hotel.
thank you so much wow. for that amazing footage. I'm just so glad. I mean, I get to see all sorts of different parts of the country and, and superchargers in particular. Like if you're heading through that kind of neck of the woods, it's great. You can know what's around. So every week we love to shout out to our Patreon supporters. Um, this week is no different. We have just a growing list of amazing Patreon supporters. Their support means that we can afford to do stuff. Like we're going to San Francisco on this VIP tour. It's great that they gave us free passes to the tour, but all the rest of it we have to pay for. So um, without you, we couldn't go. I mean, literally we would have just been sitting home looking at our passes. Right, I mean, so. it helps a whole bunch. Yeah. I mean, and just, it just lets us know that we're not crazy. Um, well, because, we might be crazy. But. Well, it just lets us know that for caring about Tesla, we're not crazy because I mean, people talk to me all the time and they're like, Tesla, oh, you're crazy. They, duh, I have this one point that in, <laughs> stuck in my mind that uh, you're crazy. And it just, thank you so much for, for, you know, contributing to this show and contributing to our YouTube channel. It's just fantastic. So I just want to give a really heartfelt thank you to Ethan Claxton, David Eichelman, and David Lemieux. Thank you so, so much. So much. And, um, you know, if you are about to go out and purchase a lovely Model S or Model X, uh, congratulations, first of all. And yeah. secondly, um, use our referral code, save yourself a thousand bucks. Right. Um, and then use, just send that thousand bucks to us. No, I'm just kidding. Um, that referral code will go such a long way. Um, there are all sorts of perks um, for people who can get a lot of referral codes. and we can use those perks to yeah do things like go on this factory tour go on this amazing factory tour and there's going to be more right amazing things that we can we can I go. know more releases that are coming up the model 3 the model y the pickup truck the semi like we, right. we, we might go, be able to go to those things for you and film stuff right we can go to spacex i mean there's all sorts of crazy fun things that we could do yeah. um so definitely use our referral code if you're thinking about it thank you so much for watching everybody now you know <laughs>